Geothermal heating or cooling systems are a spectacularly easy way for owners of large buildings or small to make energy savings. And across a whole nation, the change can be enormously significant. What are we talking about? We're talking about the same technology that is used to power the refrigerator in your house. You have a pump, and that pump drives coolant around the system. Part of that system gets very hot, and the other part of it gets very cold. If the pizza that is cold is inside the fridge, then it cools you down, and it releases heat on the back of the fridge. But you can put the thing into reverse, so you could have a, at the back of the fridge that becomes full of ice, it's pumping heat inside the fridge and turning it into an oven. And we can drive this same technology on a larger scale to heat or cool an entire house, a factory, a hotel, a tower block, a school or a hospital. And it works by using a big compressor powered by electricity with long pipes going either uh, through shallow trenches around a meter below ground level or going down into the earth through uh, big pipes uh, vertically into the ground. And these are our store of heat or of cooling and depending on which way you run the pump. And on the other side, inside the building, you run those pipes into your fan system which means that you then have warm air coming out or you have cold air coming out, whichever you like. And it works very efficiently. If you compare with the costs of burning oil, for example, in a big boiler, you could see up to 75% energy savings on a day-by-day -day basis. If you're talking about gas, maybe it's only 50% savings, but it's still very significant. And therefore, it's not surprising that governments have woken up to the potential of all of this. And if we look at Sweden, you will see that over 70% of all new homes now have geothermal heat pumps built into them right from the start. It's around 30% of all new homes in Switzerland and 45% of all new homes in New Zealand and yet in Australia it's hardly used. In the UK we seem hardly to have heard of it. So what's the future? Well you can expect dramatic growth in the number of companies offering geothermal systems which will have a payback period of 10 or 15 years depending on the exact layout of the land around. You see if you have a lot of flat land around farmland it's very easy and relatively cheap to dig a shallow trench and to put in the piping that you need. If you're in a city situation to drill down deep especially through rock is obviously much more expensive. And you sometimes need much more powerful power supplies than perhaps a domestic building would have. You might need three phase electricity instead of one phase and so on. But it's a very interesting technology because it can be used so widely and it works in a wonderful way when it's producing heat and cooling in the same building over a period of seasons. Because in the winter what you're doing is you're extracting warmth out of the ground and making it very cold underground and you're bringing that warmth into your building. Now in the summer you suddenly need a whole lot of ice to cool your building down. And where is it? Well, it's underground. It's in that cooled earth that you created in the winter when you sucked all that heat out of the rock to heat your house. So you've got nice cool earth there which gives you a nice boost when you're starting to bring coldness into your house and uh, you're going to heat up the earth at the same time. When you heat up the earth, by the end of the summer that earth will be pretty hot. Well, you put it into reverse and you can start sucking out that hot earth add the heat there and bring it back at your house for the winter. So it's an interesting technology, watch out, and it's worth a lot. Let's calculate it. Let's say $30,000 average for a domestic installation with a payback period, as I say, of 10, 12, 14 years. If you were thinking about, let's say, half of all new homes in Britain being equipped with this kind of technology, we could be looking at maybe uh, 200,000 homes a year, something like that. But you add to that maybe 1% of all existing stock, wow, you are then talking enormous figures. So it depends on the country, the number of buildings involved and things like that, but this is a truly enormous market 
worth billions of dollars a year worldwide.